there are seven destructive sins. And among those seven destructive sins, one is black magic. If any person is practicing black magic, or if any person goes to a black magician, then he becomes a disbeliever and he has to renew his iman. Through this video, I'm going to share with you 13 distinctive features to recognize a black magician. These black magicians in our society appear to us as saints, as sheikhs, as peers, and many times they claim to be someone who has closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But inshallah, I'm going to share with you these 13 distinctive features, and inshallah, through this, you can recognize any person who claims to know the unseen as a black magician. Identification number one is if he asks you your name and your mom's name, then he is a black magician. For example, if you go to him and he asks you, okay, what's your name? You say, my name is Abdullah. And then he asks you, what's your mom's name? You say, my mom's name is Amina. Then he's a black magician. Because in the field of exorcism, in the field of ruqya, there is no need to ask names. Because you recite Quran, and if jinn is possessed, then he comes out speaking. And you talk to him, you deal with him. But in this case, you no need to ask any name. But jinns do not recognize human beings as legitimate. They recognize human beings as illegitimate. And that's the reason they recognize human beings by mom's name, but not by dad's name. And if he takes a sweaty garment from you, and he says that he'll gonna cure you through the sweaty garment, then he is a magician. For example, if he asks you to get your hat or your undergarment, or socks or any kind of cloth on which your sweat is caught in that case he is a black magician and if he asks you to get a specific kind of animal with certain features with certain specifications then he is a black magician for example if he asks you to get black crow black sheep or a ram, or a rooster, or a hen. And sometimes they may ask you to get all. So if they ask you to get any kind of animal with certain specifications, then he is a black magician. He may claim that he will slaughter it in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he may pretend to do so in front of you by saying, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, but in reality, he slaughters it in the name of the jinn. And he will ask you to put the carcass at a place where people don't usually pass by. And that is where the jinns come and consume the, uh, the animal. And if he writes incantations, taweez or amulets, then he is a magician. For example, he writes to you a taweez and tells you to wear it. And he tells that if you do not wear it, then you're going to be in the trouble. Then he is a magician. If he gives you taweez, then he's a magician. And if he recites unclear incantations, then he is a magician. For example, he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He recites something which is unclear. Or sometimes they say, Bismillahi wa bi Rasulihi wa bi Jibril wa bi Mekal wa bi Israfil wa bi Sharsarubi wa bi Sahsarubi wa bi Shamsarubi. So these kinds of unclear incantations, then he is a magician. And if he gives you uh, a piece of paper, especially which contains squares within which letters or figures are written, if he gives you these kinds of incantations on which you find squares and lines and pentagon, hexagon and all the symbols and he writes something in it, then he is a magician. And if he instructs you to be in a dark room for a certain period of time and do not talk to people for this certain period of time, then he is a magician. For example, he may tell you not to talk to people and be in the dark room for three days, five days, seven days, eleven days. 
So if he tells you to be secluded, and if he asks you to do certain kind of rituals in the dark room, then he is a magician. In the same way, if he instructs you to not to ch touch water for a certain period of time, then he is a magician. He may tell you not to touch water for three days, for five days, for seven days, then he is a magician. And if he gives you something to bury in the ground, then he is a magician. For example, he may give you a piece of paper and tells you, okay, take this and burn it in front of your gate. Or take this back and burn it somewhere where people don't usually pass by. And if he gives you something and tells you to bury it in front of your neighbor's house or your relative's house, then he's a magician. In the same way, if he gives you pieces of paper and asks you to burn it in the morning or in the evening, then he's a magician. Usually they give, a, uh, they give incense sticks and they ask you to burn it in the morning and the evening. And they tell you burn it in the, um, after Fajr and after Maghrib and after Asr. And they give you a certain time and certain uh, period and duration. Then he is a black magician. And if he murmurs unclear words, then he is a magician. He may say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Al-Hakum Al-Takasur and he recites something and, and he rises again and he goes back and he rises again, then he is a magician. If he murmurs unclear words, then he is a magician. And if he informs you your name, your town's name, and the purpose of the visit, then he is a magician. If he claims that he knows unseen, then he is a magician. Because no one knows unseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he claims to know the unseen, then he is a magician. At the time of Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah a person challenged that he knows the number of grains in your bag. And when he came to the town of Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah and said that I can tell the number of grains in your bag. So everyone came with the grains in their bags and he, as per the challenge, he said your bag contains 100 grains, 200 grains, 500,000. But when, when the turn of Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah came, he couldn't tell. So Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah refuted him and say that if you don't leave this place, I'm going to inform the Khalifa. So when people came to Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah and asked, how could he not tell about the grains in your back and how could he tell about the grains in our back? So Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah saying, when you counted the grains, your Qareen or the jinn with you, associated with you, he counted those grains. And he informed the jinn, the Qareen of the magician. But in my case, I didn't count. I put all the grains in my bag and I came here. So these people take the help of the jinn to know the unseen and if they inform you the purpose of the visit, the number of rooms in your house and the relatives in your house, your family members and everything, then he is a magician, he is not a Muslim. If he writes broken letters on a piece of paper or a plate made of white porcelain and instructs you to dissolve the writing in water and drink it, then he's a magician. It's, it's normal. It's normal in my place in India. They give you white porcelain plates and they write fa, noon, qaf, alif, ba with any material. I don't know what, what they write with. And they ask you to, to dissolve it and drink it. And alhamdulillah, when I posted about uh, these 13 distinctive features on my Facebook page, a brother messaged me saying that Alhamdulillah he had these um, pieces of papers with him and his, his uh, you know, murshid asked him to dissolve it in the water and drink it every day and he drank the same day but when he came to know about this Alhamdulillah he quit and it's my request to all of you that if you come to know about the things that please quit the things and if you continue with the things then you'll gonna not enter into paradise as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that if you go to a person who claims to know the unseen and if you believe in him then you have disbelieved in my prophethood I hope these 13 distinctive features are clear I guess that you have noted it down and please pass it on to others so that those who are not aware of their things get awareness, insha'Allah.